be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, right. not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word or the message of reconciliation. All right. Amen. Again, we are still using as a topic for this series the ministry of reconciliation, the roots, purpose, and plea of evangelism. And at this point, we are dealing with part five of this series. We have spent our time in the past uh, looking at, first of all, the concepts that we find in the book of 2 Corinthians by way of <coughs> the Apostle Paul trying to justify as well as vindicate himself as a preacher of God as well as one of his apostles. We then moved into uh, the elements that relate to this particular book uh, in regards to this broader message or concept known to us as the ministry of reconciliation. Right. We started that conversation jumping a bit forward, talking about our responsibility in the ministry of reconciliation by way of emphasizing the importance that we have and the role that we play in sharing in partnership, in fellowship with this ministry and even this message or this word of reconciliation. That we cannot become selfish in this paradigm to where we only look at uh, what God has done for us through the ministry of reconciliation, but that we act out of a level of responsiveness and we take on the mindset and take on the attitude that if God was gracious enough to save us, yes. if God was gracious enough to introduce to us the gospel message of his dear son, then there are two things that I can do at least on a minimal level. Amen. That because God has decided to reveal unto me the message of the gospel uh, to share with me the, or to expose to me the, the death, burial, and the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ by way of all of that making up the composite of salvation, that if God has opened the windows of his mind to me based upon salvation, number one, I can live like I appreciate that, and number two, I can engage myself also in the process of trying to evangelize and share this same word that brought salvation into my life that I can also share this same message Amen. with others. Amen. This is the ministry of reconciliation. Then uh, the last time I stood before you, we backed up a little bit and tried to make our way back to the roots of reconciliation, which is an awesome study, talking about the roots of, of reconciliation, understanding that all of this is connected. We don't want you 
to lose sight of the fact that all of this is connected to uh, this concept and this process of evangelism. So we don't want you to get uh, uh, caught up in, 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 in the rhetoric. We don't want you to get caught up in the words. We don't want you to get caught up in the sermonic discourse. But we do want you to connect this sermon series to one of our priority areas, which is evangelism. So what we are trying to build is the purpose and the passion behind why we are energetic and why, why we are zealous about sharing a word. But we cannot be zealous about sharing a word of God with someone else if we are not holistically tuned into the depths and the roots of the whole reconciliation uh, process. So here uh, we are talking about the reconciliatory roots of evangelism and this is to lead us into having the right kind of mindset and the right type of, of passion around what it is we're doing uh, in Christ Jesus. So let's just go back real quick, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, beginning again at, at verse 17, and, and eventually we're going to make our way into this conversation of the relationship between roots and the reconciliation process. So as we began that conversation, we spoke uh, last time I was before you about the essence of Reconciliation, being about the business of God and God all by himself. All right. All right. In other words, it is true that you and I get to participate in the ministry of reconciliation. We get to participate in the word or the message of reconciliation. But something had to take place within the Godhead. For us to even be able to have that particular privilege. Right. For us to be able to sit here and worship God in spirit and in truth. And sing songs to him. Give of our means. Partake of the Lord's broken body and shedded blood. Something had to happen for us to be able to engage in that process. And as we spoke about, while God was doing that, while God was working all of that out, you and I were out in the world acting out all of our craziness. Yeah. Right, right, right. So it was not that we entered into a negotiation with God and said, okay, God, we see how we have messed this thing up. Now, now what is it, God, that, that you and I can do right. to right. fix this thing? Right. No, it was God who looked around and said, I'm tired yeah. of this broken relationship. And God took responsibility mm -hmm. and ownership upon himself to usher in a process and a ministry of reconciliation. And he did that when you and I had better things on our mind. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. So again, going back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, again, verse, verse 17. Therefore, Therefore, if, providential word there, therefore, if, it's so, it's so interesting how clear I can see with these glasses on my, my goodness, there's a sermon just in preaching about some glasses. Yes, therefore, if, yes, if any man, can you see? Yes. Ah, God came for you, I see y'all in 3D, but it's not as scary the way in which I see y'all. So God came so that you could see.
to himself. Not that we reconciled ourselves to God or that we engaged in a partnership and we engaged in a reconciliatory partnership where God did his piece and I did my piece. The work of reconciliation is all God's work. It doesn't matter how special you feel you are. It doesn't matter how morally good you feel you are. It doesn't matter how ethically driven or purpose you feel you are. The work of reconciliation, when God reconciled us to himself, you and I had nothing. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. Reconciled us to himself. How? By Jesus Christ. And I've given to us now the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. To wit, verse 19, that God, God was in Christ mm. Mm. reconciling the world unto himself. Yeah. We're going to dig a bit deeper into that. God was, was, was in Christ. Yeah. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing not charging to our account their trespasses unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. All right. Now, now then we are, here's the behavior piece, now then we are, if we appreciate this process of reconciliation that you and I could not pay for, that you and I could not bargain. You and I could not bargain with God. But God, if I do this, uh, will you do that? We had nothing that we could pay for. So it says that we are reconciled to him. And now we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech or urge you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. Verse 21 says, Now then, or for he hath made him, oh, he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, All right. that we might be made the righteousness of God how? In him. In him. Yes, sir. So through this process of reconciliation, uh -huh. God sets us up in such a way right. that we can be declared righteous, mm -hmm. not in and of ourselves, mm -hmm. but that you and I can be declared righteous. That's even when you're living unrighteously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it such a tragedy when we engage ourselves in sin that we are declared righteously even when we were doing our unrighteous acts last night. Yeah. That's, right. That's the power of God's reconciliation. Right. See, if it was my reconciliation or your reconciliation, then it would be based upon, well, you're righteous when you're doing righteous things and you're unrighteous when you're doing unrighteous things. But when God declares you and I righteous yeah. because it's his work, then you are righteous no matter what because God is not imputing it to your account. He put it on the back. Yeah. So again, here we go into the deep roots, the deep roots and duality of a reconciliatory a relationship. So here we are, are talking about two or three things. We'll look at two, but primarily it's a conversation that, that includes, that includes three when we're talking about the deep duality of the reconciliatory root or the roots of reconciliation from the priority area of evangelism. Right. Now, number one, we understand that it is a reconciliatory process where God does all the work to reconcile you and I back to him. All of God's work. None of, no one was asking God for this reconciliation, but God decided because of his infinite wisdom and his love, his mercy, his grace, he said, I'm going to reconcile humanity and all of existence back to me, even though no one is asking for this particular blessing. God says, because I'm all about blessing. Chaotic. 
come into play. So we have number one, God reconciles us back to himself, and he does that all by himself. Then, secondarily, through the reconciliation process, God then reconciles humanity to humanity. God reconciles Jew to Gentile, Gentile to Jew. So first, God starts with this divine work from a heavenly perspective of first, let me reconcile all of humanity back to myself. Let me reconcile man. Let me reconcile woman. Let me reconcile the heavenly realm back to myself. Followed by that, let me fix this human problem. Yeah, yeah. Because humans don't know how to get along. That's right. Human beings don't know how to treat each other. Right. They operate out of racism. They operate out of classism. They operate out of ageism. So God said, not only am I going to reconcile you back to me, but I'm also going to reconcile human to human. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Again, nobody was asking. That's but right. God said, I'm so infinite. And I'm so full of love that not only will I reconcile you back to me, but I'm going to reconcile you to each other. So if you are mistreating another human being, you are out of line because God already restored peace Amen. between all of humanity. Amen. So there is no need for anyone to feel less than another, not because of your work. Not because of Martin Luther King's work. Not because of Malcolm X's work. Not because of any president presidential work. Not because of the Constitution of the United States. God was already in the business reconciling us back to himself and reconciling us to each other. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We just get to jump on board yes, sir. and act like we are partners in this business. But if it was left up to us, we would keep each other. God said, I'm, I'm good. That's right. I'm great and I'm full of, full of mercy. So go, go in quickly, just in terms of this supreme, the supreme work of roots as we look at Colossians momentarily. But again, as we start in Colossians, not just yet, but now we're looking at this from a roots perspective. And when you begin to Look at the anatomy of roots. All right. This is an interesting process Come on. Come on. because the beautification of the tree, the beautification of the plant, All right. the beautification of the rose, the glory of the tree, mm -hmm. the glory of the plant, Say that. the glory of the rose. Is based upon the work of the roots. That's right. That's right. That's right. But look at how the roots hang out. Come on. The roots exist in dirt. That's Come on. They exist around worms and, and bugs and all of these things that, that, that are not advantageous or, or that, that are not pleasing to the eye. That's where the roots hang out. That's right. The roots hang out below the surface. Nobody can see what the roots are doing. But if the roots ever stop working, the leaves would stop shining. If the roots ever stop working, the fruit would stop blossoming. If the roots ever stop working, then the roses would no longer blood. But the roses would no longer bloom. So God is helping us understand. He did the root work. God was doing all the nasty work. God one that got dirty. God is the one that went into the grave and defeated both the grave and death. You and I, we were up there doing our own thing while God was doing the root work. God was doing the work you and I wouldn't do. God got to a place you and I wouldn't go because he engaged us in the process of the ministry of reconciliation. But we must first of all understand, this happens underground. Amen. Some of the blessings that people have that comes through you Come on. based upon the providence of Christ, they did not see the work. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on now. Yeah. Man. Our children think money just falls out the sky. Right. Yes. Come on. They think Safeway just somehow delivers groceries yes, or it just Come somehow on. pops on the table. Yes, sir. That mom doesn't cook, dad doesn't clean, somehow you just snap your fingers and things happen. Ah. No, you got some parents, you got some adults doing the root work. That's right. That's right. What happens is, God is so efficient.
this root work that it makes some people think the work is easy. Say that again. Yeah. Yeah. Say that again. Those roots are working hard, and when the roots die, the whole tree. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Go to verse, verse 15, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians 1, 1 15. Again, this root work here. Christ is the visible image All right. mm -hmm. of the invisible God. Yes, sir. Again, this is the, the root work that we're talking about in the beautification process. Christ was at work. He did some work in the presence of the people who became the people of God. But then also, after he was dead and in that grave, Three days and three nights. We can read about it. We can preach about it. We can teach about it. I don't think we will ever fully understand what Christ was doing Amen. when he was in the grave because he was doing root work. He was doing the heavy lifting. He went to places you and I couldn't go. He did things. He set the record straight in a way that you and I would not be able to do. So now Christ, this is the New Living Translation, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. Verse 16, for it is through him God created everything in the heavenly realms yes, and on earth. He made the things we can see yeah. and the things we can't see, yeah. such as thrones, such as kingdoms, such as rulers and, uh, and authorities in the unseen world. Yeah. There's things going on that you and I just are not privy to. Right. Right. There's some evil going on and there's also some battle going on in the heavenly realm, in the spirit realm, where God yeah. is showing his power. Everything, everything was created through him and for him. Verse, verse 17 and 18. He existed before anything else. Yeah. And he holds, he, not you, not me, uh -huh. he holds all creation together. Yeah. There might be some people that you fear. Uh, no need to. Because God holds them yeah, that's right. together. They act like they are a God. Uh -huh. But without God, they too crumble. He holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. Yeah. So he is first. Yeah. Amen. Is God first? Is God first in your life? The text says he is first yeah. in everything. Mm -hmm. <sighs> 19 and 20. For God, for God in all his fullness, in all of his fullness, look at this, was pleased to live in Christ. We don't have time to get into that. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. Look at what he did. He made peace. See, I, I, I understand that. Just a couple of weeks ago, I told you that I, I still have not got to the point to where I can, I can holistically preach Romans chapter 7, verses 14 through 28. When the Apostle Paul goes through his discourse yes. about, I'm trying to do good. Right. But when I'm trying to do good, evil is still with me. Right. He talks about, oh, wretched man yeah. that I am. So through studying this process, and especially this particular passage, it gives me a greater understanding of what the Apostle Paul was talking about. Because, see, sometimes we get stuck in the area of the, the visible actions of our Christianity. All right. So we, we can all get a little bit stuck and, and perhaps 
come uh, a bit too high in our esteem. All right. Because we can say, well, I have not had a drink in 20 years. Or, no, I have not been drunk in 20 years. No, I have not smoked a cigarette in 20 years. Or, no, I have not smoked a blunt in, in 20 years. Or, no, I have not fornicated since I gave my life over to Christ. So we talk in terms of action yeah. that is outward yeah. action. Right. But what the text says is that it pleased God or it pleased, it pleased him to live in Christ and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace. Yeah. He made peace with everything in heaven Come on, come on. Wait, wait, wait. Why would he need to make peace? Come on. Why would he need to make peace with that which is in heaven? Yeah, say it again. And earth. Come on. Why would the heavenly realm be disrupted? Come on. Shouldn't he only be concerned about making peace with humanity? The problem is when Adam and Eve, or when Adam sinned in the garden based upon being seduced by the devil, yes. right. it threw off sinful yes. all of God's creation, yes. even a distortion in the heavenly realm, because the devil yes. Yes. is a transformed angel. Yes. Yes. He once walked with God, lived yes. with God, yes. but fell from his position. Yes. So therefore, when the devil got involved process as one of God's falling angels, it threw off right. the whole scheme of relationship yeah. with Almighty God. So now the reconciliation process right. fixes yes. that which is in heaven right. and that which is on earth. You can remember over there in the book of Revelation when they got to the seventh seal. Yeah. And they realized there was no one in the heavenly realm that could loose or open the seventh seal until they saw the slain lamb, until they saw the Son of God, he could then open the seventh seal. Why? He had done the root work to reconcile that which is in earth as well as that which is in the heavenly realm. God did that. Not you. Amen. Not I. But God did that all by himself. So again, I understand. I understand because here, when, when Adam and Eve when Adam sinned in the garden and it threw everything off, the text says he reconciled everything to himself. He made peace. When Adam sinned in the garden, based upon Eve eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then Adam also partaken. They now went from a type of friendship with God All right. to a type of enemy relationship All right. with God. Mm -hmm. Now here, here's what we have to understand here, and, and, and here's where all of us should walk out of here, regardless of how obedient you are, having a new sense of appreciation for God's grace and God's mercy. Amen. Now, Notice that before Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, all they knew about was following after the obedience of God. They had no concept or conception of what it meant to do evil or what it even meant to think evil. What separates you and I from God and makes his reconciliation work absolutely essential and necessary is that you might have your bodily behavior under control. But truth be told, you got some wicked and some sadistic thoughts. Say it again. Yeah, we walk around with our obedient attire on. No, I have not spoken. I have not sinned. I have not fornicated. Yeah, but your mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thoughts run through your mind that oh, y'all cute. Y'all cute. Oh, 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 oh. That's why you had to reconcile. You won't even admit. Now, God is not talking about it's in your mind 
therefore you act it out. Right, right. No, no, he's not talking about that. He's saying that once Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it put us in an awkward relationship with him because even if we're not acting it out, God is saying, you can't roll with me even if you're just thinking about crazy right. stuff. That's right. That's right. That's right. He said, I don't think about crazy stuff. Come on. I don't think about lusting. Mm. I don't. Come on, I don't think about fornication. I don't think about getting high. I don't think about getting drunk. I don't think about the big heist. I don't think about all that. But because we do, God said He had to give up His Son to reestablish peace, so that we can get back to Him with the relationship like Adam and Eve, like Adam and Eve had with Him in the garden before they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But now we can see how good His grace is. Because before they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they knew no evil. That's right. Yeah. They could only act out of good. Yeah. God now, through the reconciliation process, He takes us back to an Adam and Eve type of relationship, where a relationship where He accepts us and embraces us fully That's right. as being in the type of relationship He wants, despite Amen. your wicked thoughts. Amen. He says, "My grace." will cover that aspect. That yes, the, 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 this, this sinful element has been introduced into the world, but my son has come All right. to establish peace so that even when you are out of your mind, despite the fact that you, look, yes. I know you haven't had a drink, you haven't done this, are you telling me it doesn't call you? That's mm. right, I say that. God is saying that's the difference. That's, ah, that's why I had to reconcile you because even though you might not be acting on it, right, right, right. you and I are different. I am holy. You are not completely holy aside from the work of my son because your thoughts, yes, sir. Yes, sir. you might not be acting, but are you telling me, yeah, I haven't had a, I, I haven't been drunk in 20 years. you telling me you never came home from a rough day that's right. Feeling like That's right. maybe this is relapse day. Oh, okay. Oh, stay stay right. cute. Stay oh, cute. Right. You, 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 got, you got rid of him. Yeah. You got rid of her. Yeah. Because the relationship was toxic. The relationship was bad. But other elements you feel were good. Uh-huh. 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 So you excommunicated the person. Are you telling me every now and then mm. right. you don't feel tempted mm -hmm. to pick up the call mm. just for one last? Mm. Yeah. Amen. God said he died That's right. not just for our physical sins, right. but he died also for our sinful disposition. Yes. Because the way in which he created us, that was not to be part of the relationship, but now that it is part of the relationship, somebody had to pay the price so that when you are out of your mind, God can still embrace you based upon the love he has for you through his son. Come on. That's right. Come on. Amen. Amen. So when Paul is talking in Romans 7, 14 through 28, it doesn't mean he's acting out anything. That's right. He's saying, I'm in the midst of doing the will of God. I'm in the midst of doing the work of God, but why are these crazy? Why are these sadistic thoughts? Yes, why are these insane thoughts? Why are they still running through my head? He said, I'm trying to do good, but evil is still present with me. Doesn't mean I'm acting it out. Doesn't mean I'm going to do anything. And as a matter of fact, I don't even have to confess this to you, but by the providence of God, I am. So don't just, just think that it's about what you act out. God died for what you act in. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because, because all of that differentiates us from him based upon holiness and righteousness. Amen. Therefore, we can only be declared righteous through the work of Jesus Christ. Because from a thought process, forget actions, because I know nobody wants to admit actions. Right. Forget take actions off the table. Sometimes we got good thoughts. Yeah. Sometimes we have that right. That's right. God said, I needed to reconcile you and re-engage re peace. God said, when, when, when Adam and Eve violated the garden, our friendship with him turned from friendship to enmity. That's true. But here, 
He says in verse 20, and through him, yeah. God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace. He reestablished friendship. Mm. He made, God can't be friends with evil. That's right. That's right. Make it plain. Therefore, he had to allow his son to die. Yeah. So that he could still be in relationship with a group of people that will never get it done on their own. That's right. Now, That's right. priority area evangelism. This is part, we haven't got there yet, but this is part of the purpose and the passion behind the evangelistic message that we share. The fact that God did all the root work, yeah. and despite who you think you are, God died for our wretchedness, because even though you're not acting out sinful behavior, yeah. Yeah. Amen. you still have to hold yourself back. That's right. yes. Amen. God is saying, I have no sin in me. My son has no sin in me, so therefore for us to be in relationship, I have to do something with your sin. Yes, sir. Amen. Or else I have to kill you. Oh. Mm. That's justice. Mm. You don't want justice from God. Therefore, we have to be careful how we deal with each other because the way we deal with each other, God can turn around and say, do you want me to deal with you that way? That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Come on. He made peace with everything in heaven and, and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Verse, verse 21. This includes you who were once far from God. You were his enemies. That's right. This is what happened. Yeah. In the Garden of Eden, when we violated the garden, because you would have did the same thing. And Adam, why y'all have to? You would have did the same thing. Yeah. You're doing the same thing right now. God told you what is forbidden, and you're still dibbling and dabbling. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So to think that you would be holistically different. You two are curious. You two can be tantalized. We all have evidence of it. We've all creeped in some form of fashion. Yes, sir. No, I've never. Well, you creeped in your mind. This includes you, who were once far away from God, you were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. All we focus on is the manifest behavior. All right. All right. This is a game changer for me. Right, right, right. Okay, you got your behavior under control. See, this is where people would like to say, well, you know what? No, I, I, I was this, I was that, I was, I was never this kind of person, I was never that kind of person. <laughs> start, to, start, start telling us about your thoughts. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thoughts run through your mind. Okay? If, if the therapy session started with, well, you know what, we're going to start this session with, tell me your deepest and most troubling thoughts. No, not stuff that has happened to you. What runs through your mind? That caused you to say, what? Mm, right. <laughs> uh -huh. well, run, 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 the, the, the kind of thoughts that run through your mind to where you end up when you see him or her, when you see this person or that person, the thought was so crazy, you end up sharing a message with them. You doing okay? Mm. <laughs> you doing all right today? Because you have a crazy thought That's right. about something bad yeah. mm -hmm. happening to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't even know where it came from. Right. The prince and the power of the air operates under demonic darkness and can infiltrate all of our minds and does infiltrate. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen. Right. Verse 22. Yet, yet, yet now, yet now, thankfully, yet now, he has reconciled you <laughs> to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you are holy. My goodness. Look at this. Look at this. Despite your wicked thoughts, despite your carnal thoughts, you are still in his presence. And you are still considered holy and blameless as you stand before him without a sin. Come on. Amen. Come on. You couldn't do it. 
that there, there's nothing you and I could have done despite all of the evil stuff we think and some of the evil stuff we've done to where we could do something to then stand before God faultless. That's right. That's right. Mercy, Lord. Amen. This next level here, again, Ephesians chapter 2 will be there momentarily, but now we turn to how he's reconciled us to each other. God sets the stage for everything. Ephesians chapter 2, verse, verse number 11. Again, this is God doing the root work. This is God who has operated in the unseen world doing what you and I could not do. Therefore, it should make us appreciative of the majesty of God. He says here, Paul says, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11, don't forget, my goodness, it's amazing. Don't forget, don't forget, ah. Ah. Don't, don't forget yes, sir. that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. That's right. Right. You were called uncircumcised. Now look, what Paul is now dealing with is reconciliation from a humanity perspective. He's saying yes, under Mosaic law, Jews became the people of God. Not under the patriarchal system, but under the Mosaic system, Jewish people became the people of God, and Gentiles or anybody outside of the Jewish dynamic was not considered the people of God. But here God is saying that you were called uncircumcised yeah. heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision. Even though, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. Right. So again, God is helping us understand even on a deeper level. Verse number 12. In those days, in those days you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship. Verse number 12, Zion. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. And you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world with, Come on. without Come on. God. That's right. You should be thankful. Amen. God was saying to the Gentiles, there was a time when you existed in the world without God. Right. Meaning, you didn't have a covenant system. God had his covenant system with the Jews. The promises had made to, to them, you lived in this world without God and without her. Hope, verse number 13. But now, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus once you were far away from God, but now you've been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. Right. Verse 14. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. Amen. Look at this next phrase. He united Jews and Gentiles Amen. into one people Amen. when in his own body on the cross he broke down the middle wall of partition or the wall of hostility that separated us. Now don't get the middle wall of, of, of partition or, 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 or the middle wall or the wall of hostility. Don't confuse that with the veil that was ripped when Christ died on the cross. This was that wall in the temple that separated Jews from Gentiles. This was that wall in the temple to where if you were a Jewish proselyte, meaning you were Gentile, but you had embraced the Jewish faith, this was the wall in their religious building that said, yes, we all serve the same God, we all believe in the same God, but guess what? Even though you believe in the same God that I believe in, follow after the same book that I believe in, you can only go this far, but you cannot go beyond the middle wall of partition. So God says, now through the work of Jesus Christ, he has reconciled us together, not just splitting the veil so that anyone can come to him, but he has also, he has also removed the middle wall of partition, yeah. right. which allows all of us the same equal form of access yeah. 
to God. Now, now here's the situation. Here's why racism, That's right. oppression, That's right. and, 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 various, and various forms of, of injustice, racial, are some of the gross things that can happen. Amen. First of all, God reconciled us, all of us, to himself. Right. Then he reconciled us to each other. So for another human being to then turn around and be oppressive That's right. to another human being goes against the work and the root reconciliatory work that God did because God said, I fixed it so that you can have a relationship with me and you can have a relationship with each other. So therefore, if you begin oppressing one another, you are outside the blessing right. that I allowed my son to die for. He's saying, I didn't allow my son to die so you can mistreat another human being. I allow my son to die. So first of all, you and I can be in a relationship, and then the two of you can be in a relationship. Yes, so what business do you have yes. to mistreat another human being? That's why under the concept of racism and even the deep concept of slavery, that's why African people in this country had to be relegated to animals. Yes. Because then they could say that the work of reconciliation does not apply to them because they're not human. It doesn't apply to them because they're animals. So that's how sick the mind of man and woman can get. But God is saying, I don't know who you think you are fooling with those thoughts. They are people. I died for everyone so that they can be reconciled to me and you can be reconciled to each other. So just understand the deep level of sickness. It, 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 and this is not part of my lesson, but it, it confuses me how we talk about uh, the, the, the greatness of this nation, which I'm not, I'm not going to pull on that, but when we're having the conversation about the greatness of this nation, we also have to be a people of confession That's right. That's right. about some of the sick things we did. Yes, what some, look, because the concept of, of oppression, the concept of slavery, doesn't just dehumanize the oppressed. That's right. It also alters the mindset of the oppressor. So everybody has some work that they need to do. He said he broke down the middle wall of hostility. So how dare you create a system that allows you to impoverish or enslave another group of people when I broke down that wall. Verse, verse 15. He did this by ending the system of the law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace, peace, between Jew, Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people right. from two groups. Verse 16, together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups. This is the root word. He reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross mm -hmm. and our hostility. Mm -hmm. Look, that, that's why uh, what, what is it? it talks about the, the, the peace of God. Right. The psalmist talks about the peace of God is already settled in heaven. Mm -hmm. So it's God's way of saying you can have all the holy wars and race wars you that's want it. to have. Yes. He's saying my son already died to establish peace. The problem is you just haven't caught up right. to the peace work of my son and you choose to keep fighting. You choose to keep holding a grudge. You choose to keep issuing out hostility. Yeah. But God says I killed all that. That's right. His death on the cross and our hostility toward each other was put to death. Verse 17. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us, now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's the priority area of evangelism. That we can all come to Christ Jesus through the same Holy Spirit of what Christ has done for us. Verse 19 so now, so now Gentiles are no longer strangers, foreigners. No longer strangers and foreigners. That's right. You are citizens. 
along with all of God's holy people, you are members of God's family. Amen. This is to just get us started along this road of the roots of reconciliation that lead to the roots of evangelism. That God has done all of the heavy lifting. That's right. He's done all of the powerful work, first of all, for me to be able to call him God. That's right. And then to be able to call any man my brother. That's right. Or any sister my sister. Yeah. Despite racial background, That's despite right. educational attainment, Amen. despite ethnicity, despite socioeconomic economic status, despite anything that men and women like to put up as barriers. Come on. Yes. God died, so we hold none of those things against each other, that we live a lifestyle for him, and that we are conducive and loving toward Amen. one another. Amen. That's what he died to establish. So, with all of that being said, then the question is, how appreciative are you of his reconciliatory work? Because he did the work. For you. He allowed his son to die so that you could be saved. He allowed his son to die so that your sins could be washed away. And God just wants us to know that he has not left us alone. He wants us to be well aware of the fact that he knows exactly what you're going through. He knows that you're feeling a bit lonely. Yeah. He knows that there are some desires that you have in, in the back of your mind. You're, you're feeling like you will never be able to reach those desires or those, those possessions will, will never be possessed by you. God knows all of the things that, that has transpired in your family and is now causing you to question him and is causing you to, to doubt in his power. He knows all of the different things. He knows how you feel. He knows that you feel inadequate. He knows you have a low self-esteem. He knows that you borderline on the side of depression because you're feeling bad because you look at the life of other individuals and you begin to contemplate. Why is it that I don't have that? God is saying he knows all about your inner thoughts. He knows the things that you're struggling with. He knows the fact that your family has not come to Christ yet and is troubling you on a very deep level. He knows Yeah. 
that's a Y, I think that's a B. Yeah. I know, I know that one, but they, they, they just kept deepening mm -hmm. the process. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and even put me through one situation or one exam where I said, so you mean that machine just read how well I can see? That's right. Not that I told it what's yeah. going on, yeah. but it looked at something that my eye did when my eye focused. And that was just one element of, 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 of the process of testing before they figured out that all I needed was, you know, just something so I could see a bit further away. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's very, very, very limited here, and it can help me uh, when I'm driving. And what's interesting about it is that I don't need it for reading. All right. Mm -hmm. So you've got to figure out how to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need it from far away, but not close up. So you gotta... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Y'all know that really. Now, now, so my wife set the appointment up. Now, she was way out of line. She was way out of line for setting up the appointment. You guys have been hearing me talk about I need to go get an eye exam. I understand that, and what brought it on is I haven't been able to see that screen. But I watched Carlos up here just reading the smallest font. Yeah. So I'm like, something must be going on with my eyes, so let me go get, get checked out. All right, we got that covered now. So, so my wife sets an appointment up for me yesterday at 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I checked, yesterday was Final Four season. That's right. That's right. So she had the nerve to set me up with an eye appointment in another city. <laughs> in Pleasanton, ah. for me to go get my eyes checked in the midst of Duke playing Michigan State <laughs> and then just miss the whole Kentucky, That's game, right. Wisconsin game. But, but, I, but I recorded it. There's a moral in the story. But I recorded it. <laughs> so I recorded the game. I, I knew when I left that the Michigan game was going to be a bit intense and they probably were going to end up losing. So I checked, checked my followers and they lost. But I didn't want to know the score. That's right of the, the Kentucky-Wisconsin game. So I, I just want to have that regular experience, and so I, I don't want to know the school. Well, as soon as I get home, and I, and I stayed away in the mall, I'm like, I don't want to see any TVs, or I, don't, don't talk to me. So I get home, get on my bed, turn on the TV, get ready to go to recordings, and bam, first things that pops up is the score. <laughs> Uh -huh. So I did all of this. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, Kentucky has lost. I didn't get to rewind or anything. Now, I thought about that. Because I didn't want to know the outcome. That's right. I wanted to figure out the outcome naturally. Mm -hmm. But God, God has already informed us. All right of the outcome. All right. Now I said this when we were in Richmond a few weeks ago that uh, months ago that you know in this age in which we live with the frequent ability to record TV. Mm -hmm. So we're spoiled now. <coughs> I even have my son Shiloh every now and then we're sitting down watching live TV. Mm -hmm. And he will say at the age of five, fast forward that. <laughs> 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 Some of us treat life that way. Mm. We think there are moments we can just fast forward through. Or we feel we could put it on pause or yeah. record yeah. and come back later. Yeah. God says, come unto me. Right. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Mm. He says, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. In other words, when you hear God's voice, don't press pause. Don't press record. He's not your hour TV. He's not your uh, uh, at and He's not your Comcast. He is Father God, and when he calls, he expects for you and I to respond. So in this great love letter of God, it doesn't matter what you record. It doesn't matter what you put on pause. It doesn't matter 
what you try to fast forward through. He tells us that if we don't embrace his son, we don't get to live with him for all of eternity. So the suspense is over. That's right. There is no drama in the text. God, unlike you and unlike me, he tells us the end of the story. Yeah. Yeah. He does that because of his love. He's saying, I'm not going to leave you out in a situation to where you don't know what will happen if you don't choose me. He says it's written in the book, and there's many examples to prove it in the positive as well as the negative. He wants to know, will you choose him? Or will you put him on pause? Will you try to rewind? Or will you try to record? And come back later. There might be someone here. I don't know what, what condition or situation that you're in. But Jesus Christ died so that you can have life, have it more eternally, right. have it more abundantly. He, he died so that you could have a better way. And again, he knows everything that you're dealing with. He knows every circumstance that's going on within you, including the ones you will not admit. That's right. He knows what your inner struggles are. He knows the fact that you feel like throwing in the towel. Right. He knows that you are fed up with some people and you're on the brinks of craving and snapping. He knows all of that. And he's saying, just hold on. And if you have not put my son on through the process of hearing my word, believing it, repenting of all of your past wicked ways, confessing the sweetest name on mortal tongue and being baptized in water, he's saying you need to do that so that we can take this relationship to the next level. But then he's also talking to some of his dear children that have lost or are losing their way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's saying don't keep drifting. Don't drift from me. He knows those that are walking and getting ever so further and further and further away from him. That's right. He's saying, come back. Come back. There's nothing out there. Out there are dogs, right. are sorcerers, right. are lies, are whoremongers. Come back to me. I don't know where you are, church. I don't know where you are, family. But God's calling. Oh, Jesus.